One of my favorite techniques to use in Microsoft Word when creating fillable forms like a sales form or a business form is how to make text, images, or even tables appear automatically based on a user's drop-down list selection. Some examples might be if you have a product list and you select a product from that list, maybe you want to have the product details like an image or a SKU appear on the form. Or if you have a form where you have a list of sales reps, you select their name and you have their contact information or location details pop up on the form. This video is one lesson from a full course on how to create fillable forms in Microsoft Word. I'll include a link to the full course in the description below. In this video, we're going to specifically look at an interview questionnaire form, and we have different competency sections that we want to automatically appear on the form if we select those. Let's take a look. So just as a reminder on our original form, we have this section called interview questions. And right now there's nothing that shows, everything is hidden. But as soon as a user selects a competency from the competency selection area, for example, commitment, if they hit selected and click tab, then the question for the commitment competency box will come up so that interviewer can fill in and answer and type notes for the candidate based on the, that question during the interview. And so likewise, if the communication competency is selected, then that table will also appear. So that's the functionality that we're going to build today in this lesson. But before we do that on our form, I want to show you behind the scenes how this works so you'll have a good understanding of the syntax that we're using for this field code. All right, let's go ahead and take a quick look at this other document here. Now here I have some instructions that we're going to go over that will help you understand how we're going to put together the field code to make this work. And the long way of inserting the field code would be if you were to go up to the insert tab in Microsoft Word and then come over to the text area, click on quick parts and then select field. This will open up a menu where you can scroll down and you'll see that there's an if and then down further, there's a ref. So uh, this would be the long way of inserting that code. We're going to use keyboard shortcuts to do this and build out our syntax. So let's look at how to do that. I'm going to click cancel here and let's just go back up to our scenario where we want to just have certain text to appear. So not the table, not an image, but just some random text, whatever text we want to have appear on our form based on a drop down list selection that a user selects. So in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to insert field code starting with an if statement and that if statement is going to include the ref, which is referencing the bookmarked field. And then there's an operator, meaning saying equals, and then we're going to say the drop down list item. And if that's true or selected, we want this text to appear between these quotes. And if it's not true, then this text will appear between these quotes. So in this example, I have a drop down box that only has two drop down items. So in this example, with, when there's only two items to select for your drop down, we can use this simple if statement. The syntax will will populate if there's text that's true or false. And that's a good scenario that we can use for this example. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert that field code. We're going to reference status two, which is what we've labeled or named our bookmark field in that field property. And then we are going to say equals quotes full time, and we're going to type exactly case sensitive, the drop down list item that we want to identify. And then the text in between quotes that we want to appear if it's true or selected, and then a space and then another set of quotes and then the text to appear if it's false. So in this case, if part time is selected. So just to take a look at how this works, we're going to start enforcing protection on our form. We'll click OK. And we'll come up here to our full time status. Now, the drop down selections up here, but take a look down in this area where I have area for text to appear. I'm going to go ahead and select part time and hit tab. And notice that the part time text now appears. If I come back up and select full time again and hit tab, then FT text appears. So let's take a look at what this field code looks like. So I'm going to stop protection 
And now I'm going to hit Alt Function F9 or Alt F9 on my keyboard. This is going to display the field code that I have uh, typed in to this form. And notice down here we're saying if ref status 2 equals full time, then we want FT text appears, otherwise we want PT text appears. So that's what we have built in here. Now this works great if we just have two items in the dropdown, but what if we have multiple items and we want different text to appear depending on however many items? So in that case, we want to do a nested if statement. So if we scroll down, I've got an example here that we can take a look at. So in this example, I have a dropdown box. If I double click to open up the properties, notice that I have three different options, full-time, part-time, and per diem. And I've labeled this field status, and I've checked the box for calculate on exit. So I'm going to click OK. And so my if statement is going to read if ref status equals quotes full time, then in quotes, I want FT text to appear. I'm going to close the quotes. Then I'm going to insert another field code where it says if, and then we reference status that same field equals part time, then we want PT text to appear in quotes. And then we insert another field code for if, and then we reference status equals quotes per diem, then we want PRN text to appear. Then those brackets are closed. There's three brackets to close to finish the syntax for this nested if statement. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes, start enforcing protection. And notice that the field code for the if statement is going to disappear once we enforce protection on the sheet. So I'll click yes. Uh, we'll just click OK. And here we've got our drop down list. So if we select part time and hit tab, it'll say PT text to appear. If we select full time, hit tab, FT text to appear. And now if we select per diem and hit tab, then the PRN text appears. So that's how you would create a nested if statement if you have more than one item in your drop down list selection. Now the cool thing is that you can also do this with images. So let's take a look at how that would work. I'm going to stop protection on the form. And I'm going to scroll down. All right, in this scenario, I've created a drop down list for someone to select a manager's name. And based on whichever manager they select, we're going to have an image file of that manager's signature appear. And so this is how we would do this with an image. So I'm using a signature file. You can do any type of image or picture that you want to appear. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control Function F9 or just Control F9 on your keyboard, depending on your keyboard. Now that is the keyboard shortcut to insert the field code. You cannot just type those squiggly brackets. You do have to use the keyboard shortcut that officially inserts this as field code. And then we're just going to type our if statement. So we're going to say if, and then we're going to hit Control F9 again. And now we're going to enter that ref statement. So we're going to say REF space. And then what we're going to do is enter the name of the bookmark of the field that we want to reference. And so if we forget what that is, we can double click to open that up. We see that we've bookmarked this field as manager. And we're going to click OK. And so now we know we want to place our cursor back down here. And we're just going to type manager. Oops. Now, remember, if we have our caps lock on, we want to make sure it's case sensitive. So you have to type it exactly correct. So it's going to be manager. Now I'm going to move my cursor outside that first bracket and hit equals. And then I'm going to open up quotes, type a quotes. And this is going to say the first name of one of the managers, Carrie Heffernan. And then end quotes. So we're saying if that field equals Carrie Heffernan, now what I'm going to do is hit space and I'm going to type two quotes. I'm going to move my cursor back in between those two quotes. So my cursor is in between the next two quotes. And this is what we want to have appear. We're going to have a picture appear. So we're going to come up to our insert tab, go to pictures, this device, 
and we're just going to navigate to where we have our image file saved. We're going to select it and hit insert. All right, now we are going to resize this image. We can scale it down by dragging it in. And we can use the rotation handle to straighten it out if we want to. Now notice that our image file is in between those two quotes where we had our cursor placed. Let's go ahead and place our cursor right after the quotes, but still inside of the field code bracket. And now we want our next if statement. If it's the other manager, we want a different signature or image file to appear. So now we're going to hit control function F9, and we're going to say if, and then control function F9 to enter the reference field again, REF. We're going to type manager. We're going to move our cursor over outside of that bracket, hit equals, and then we're going to say quotes, and then the other drop down list selection, the name of the other manager, and hit quotes to close that. Now we're going to hit space and enter two quotes again, move our cursor back in between those two quotes, and insert our next image. Come up to insert, pictures, this device. We'll navigate to select our image and click Insert. Now let's resize that one. And then we can use our rotation handle to straighten that one out as well. All right, now let's test this out. We're going to go over to Yes, Start Enforcing Protection. We'll click OK. And notice that that area disappears. We come up here. We're going to select one of our manager's names and hit Tab. Then we we'll have that image appear. If we come back and select the other manager and hit tab, then that image will appear. So that's how you can link images to appear using this field code. So let's go back to our form now and create this for the table that we want to insert for the competency questions on our interview questionnaire. Now remember, in our previous lesson, we built our form out to include these tables. So we created these tables, and so they are sitting here in our Word document. But we want to have them hidden, so we really want them to be inside the field code. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be inserting these tables, just like we inserted an image. Uh, we're going to be copying and pasting these tables into that field code in between those quotes. And then what I'm going to do is then delete these off the actual document. They'll be in the field code so they'll only appear if the competency is selected by the user. So just to show you, uh, as a reminder, we created these drop-down selections up here for the competency areas of commitment, communication, and decision-making. And so if we double-click to open the properties, we bookmarked this one, Commitment, and it's either not selected or selected as the drop-down list items. We have Calculate on Exit checked, and I'm going to click OK. So same thing with Communication. This one's bookmarked as communication, click OK. And then decision making, we have bookmarked as decision making, all one word. Camel case, we have the D and the M capitalized. So we have to type that when we reference it, we have to type it exactly like that. So I'm going to click OK. All right, so what we want to do is just come over, hit Enter. So we're going to place our cursor where we want to have our field code. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit our keyboard shortcut, which is Control F9 or Control Function F9, depending on your keyboard. So that's going to insert the field code there. We're going to say if, then hit Control F9, ref, space, and then we're going to type the name of the bookmark field. So we're going to type commitment. Now I'm going to move my cursor outside of that first bracket and hit equals. Then I'm going to type quotes. And then this is going to say selected. And then close those quotes. And that is the drop down list selection that if that's selected, then I want this table to appear. So now I'm going to hit space. I'm going to hit quotes to open up a quote. And now that my cursor is there, now I'm going to select the table. I'm going to come over here to the corner. I'm going to select it so the entire table is selected. And I'm going to hit Control C to copy. I'm going to come back up here with my cursor inside the field code right after the quote and hit Control V to paste. And notice what that did was it inserted the commitment table 
and it moved the end of the field code down here because of the size of the table. Now what I need to do now is close those quotes. So I'm going to type quotes down here and that means that this table will show up when a user selects selected as a drop down under the commitment drop down box. And so the next thing I want to do now is go ahead and delete the actual table off of the form. So I'm going to come down here, select the commitment table that we copied, and I'm just going to hit backspace to delete that. And the next thing we want to do is add the code for the communication box. So I'm actually going to start a new field code here. I'm going to hit control F9 or control function F9, and we're going to say if and then hit control function F9 again, ref space communication is the name of the next field. I'm going to bring my cursor outside of that first bracket, hit equals, open quotes, select it, close quotes, space, quote, and here's where we're going to copy the next one. So this is the communication box. We're going to select that, hit control C, bring our cursor back up here right after the quote and hit control V to paste. It inserted that, that table right there. And now all we have to do where our cursor is down here is close the quotes. And then we're going to place our cursor outside there. Now we can delete the communication. We just can select that and we'll hit backspace to delete that. Now the last one we want to include is decision making. So we'll place our cursor right back up. We're going to hit control function F9 or control F9. We're going to say if, then control F9 again, ref space, this time decision making. All one word with capital D and M. And then we're going to bring our cursor outside of the ref bracket, hit equals, open quotes, select it, close quotes, space, open quote, select our decision making table, control C to copy, bring our cursor back up after the quote, hit control V to paste, and then close those quotes down here. Now we can delete this, we'll select it, hit backspace to delete, and let's come back up here and we'll start enforcing protection and take a look at what this looks like. So we'll say yes, start enforcing protection so we can test this out. We'll click OK and scroll back up. Notice that everything is hidden since nothing is selected yet. So as soon as we select our commitment and hit tab, our commitment box will appear. As soon as we select communication and hit tab, the communication box appears. And then as soon as we select decision making and hit tab, then decision making box appears. Now, one quick tip if you want to stop protection, if you ever need to see your field code, if you need to correct something or change it, then all you have to do is stop protection on the form. And then the keyboard shortcut is Alt F9 or Alt function F9. And when I hit that, notice that I can now see all of the field code again. So I can come back up and I can edit that or change it if needed. So the keyboard shortcut to view your field code uh, is actually Alt F9 or Alt function F9, depending on your keyboard. If you want to hide it again, all you have to do is hit that again to toggle it. So Alt function F9 or Alt F9 and then it will hide that code back again. So as soon as your sheet is protected, it automatically hides the field code for you. But if you do need to see it, you can. So this is a great way that you can configure your form to make either text tables or images appear based on a user's dropdown selection. Be sure and watch my full course on how to create fillable forms in Microsoft Word. I'll include a link in the description below. If you found this helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up to like it and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. You can visit my website, SharonSmithHR.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.